Hey class, welcome back to the second the second video in my series, AP Calculus for Dummies. That's what I'm calling it. It's patent pending. And so today we we have the 1999 Calculus BC AP Exam FRQ number four question 1999. And so originally, I, I was good, just going to do the entire question, and then just upload it to YouTube. But it has occurred to me recently that if I just do the question and write out everything in this in paint, knowing my crappy handwriting, it'll actually take me five hours. So instead, I've decided that I'm just going to talk about doing the question and I know I have the key right here but I'm not really worried because I know the, uh, the video quality is so bad that you can't see it so how you would do this problem is uh, first of all you read it you know some people can you know just answer the question without reading it but I, I think it's best if you read it in fact I was I, I would go as far as to say you have to read the question or else you can't answer it but you know this it's not a philosophy channel and anyways so the first thing you do is you read it it says write the third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 2 and use it to approximate f of 1.5 and so how you would do that is you you would use these values these top values let me underline them and you would use these values for your nth derivative of a values because the the Taylor polynomial is centered about x so you can use these values and once you do that you get you get this wow that is bad but okay you get that and for every point, every term that you get wrong, you get docked one point. And then after that, you sub in 1.5 for, for x. It actually, this this was a time, 1999, when you could actually use a scientific calculator for calculus BC exams. And so you you just use your uh, your your calculator, your scientific calculator, and then. Once you did that, you'd get this, this value, whatever, that's good enough. It reads negative 4.958. So the second problem says that the fourth derivative of f, its, mass, its max value is 3 on the interval 1.5 to 2. And so how, how this works is you use your Lagrange error equation. It, it literally says Lagrange error in the thing and you what what you do is you take you take the error and you and for your f your n plus one derivative of z you sub in three instead because that's the maximum value and you want to maximize the error and for for x minus a which in this case is x minus 2, you'd use 1.5 because that, that would yield you, yield you the maximum value and over over 4, 4 factorial and you would get this value you get this value that reads 0 0.0078125 and uh, that's your error, right? well your maximum error and but there's still a second part to the question and you you have to prove that f of 1.5 is not equal to negative 5 and so for this you actually have to go back to the previous question and take this value which is your approximation and then you take your error you pretty much you find the bounds of the equation and you, you see that even the maximum value 
is not is not five because actually the closest you can get to five with the error is this value negative four point nine six six and saying that that is unequal to five gives you a point and you also get a point for the value of the error bound and on a third question it says that you have to write the fourth degree Taylor polynomial p of x for g of x equals f of x squared plus 2 about x equals 0. Use p to explain g must have a relative minimum at x equals 0. So what you do there is you take this, you take this equation that you got in the first question, and then you sub in x squared minus 2 for all the x terms. And the neat thing is the x squared plus 2 and the minus 2 cancel out. And so you get nice round negative 3 plus 5x squared plus 3 over 2x to the fourth power as your gx function. And so in order to prove that g has a relative minimum, you have to take you have to take the derivative, right? Unfortunately, the key actually doesn't doesn't do it for me, so I have to do it. And you get 10x plus 6x cubed is equal to g prime of x. And if you sub in if you sub in zero, then you get zero. And so that proves that there's a relative extrema there but you cannot stop there. You have to take the derivative again to get the second derivative, you get the concavity, and you get g double prime of x is equal to 10 plus 18x. And if you sub in zero, then you get 10, which is positive, so that proves that indeed there is a relative minimum there. Some people like to solve it the way with like a number line where you sub in values from to the left and to the right of uh, zero in this case but the problem is you are neglect this approximation is neglecting all the terms after the fourth degree so you have to you can't use the number line because it's inaccurate you have to take the second derivative because all the terms after 10 are have x's in them so you know that all those other terms are going to be zero and so the tricky parts about this problem know it just knowing the the form for the Taylor series is pretty important knowing that you can use these values for the nth derivative of a and also the application of Lagrange error like mo most questions just have you oh solve for Lagrange error and use it well not use it actually you just give me the Lagrange error and there you plug it into the formula and you're like okay here here have this value and they give you the point but here you have to actually realize oh you, I can use the error to to determine the maximum bounds of this approximation and then you can use it to prove that um, f of 1.5 is not equal to negative 5 because you know the bounds anyways I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys on uh, probably on Tuesday after the chemistry AP AP test because I know you guys love chemistry Round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get around, I get around, get around, get around, round, round, I 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 get around.